Hello guys, welcome to our class. We are still talking about vectors and in this our class we're going to talk about um, addition of vectors. This is Novo Math Science Tutorials Online and remain notable market. Please, if you have not subscribed to our channel, please subscribe to the channel, click on the notification button. Also give us a thumbs up if you like what we are doing. You can reach us through the WhatsApp number that is showing on your screen. Is that okay? So please get your writing materials and then get settled for the class for today. Today we are discussing addition of vectors addition of vectors right so let's go straight to our class okay, so when you talk about addition of vectors how do you add vectors now we talk about when we uh, in our introductory class to vectors and scalars we say that for scalar quantities you just add them normally right you add them normally that is algebraically like if you have a speed of 20 kilometers per hour and then a speed of 30 kilometers per hour you for scalar quantities you just add them just simple addition that is 20 plus 30 that gives you 50 kilometers per hour right and this is because this speed is a scalar quantity but you don't add vectors like this vectors you have to consider the direction of the vector he said that the two vectors, if, if, two, if two forces are acting on the body, it is either they are moving in the same direction or they are moving in opposite direction. So depending on the direction that they are moving, then, then you also look at the magnitude of the vectors. So for the addition of vectors, you must put into consideration the direction in which the vectors are moving. So if two vectors like consider two vectors p and q that are acting in the same direction as far as the vectors are acting in the same direction they are resultant that is a common vector the resultant vector is the singular vector that can represent these two vectors so if they are acting in the same direction their resultant is gotten by addition you add the two vectors together All right you add the two vectors together and they move in a common direction they move in the same direction because the, the vectors are acting in the same direction they move in the same direction so if you have two forces p 4 newton and q 3 newton that are acting on a body in the same direction they are resultant okay so these are the forces that are represented in this particular diagram right so if p and q of 4 newton and 3 newton are moving in the same direction then the resultant is 4 plus 3 which is equal to 7 newton right now if the two forces they are now moving in opposite direction the resultant will be a minus that you minus the smaller vector from the bigger one okay so the resultant becomes uh, minus r is equal to p minus q all right so since the the vector p is greater than q the resultant will act in the direction of the greater vector of the larger force and that will be in the direction of p right so this is what i represented here so they are acting in opposite direction so their resultant is you subtract them you subtract the two vectors so your resultant will be one newton and because they are acting in opposite direction the resultant will be in the direction of the larger force which is the p direction but if the two vectors p and q are equal definitely you see that um, if they are equal and they are acting in opposite direction then the resultant will be equals to zero the result will be zero is that okay so this is how vectors are added depending on the direction that is given now i said that in our introductory uh, lecture i said that depending on the direction that the vectors are given you can add them just you can use this simple algebraic method or you can use geometrical formulas geometrical formulas is that okay so we're going to also look at other areas or other ways of solving vector problems and that brings us to resolution or resultant of vectors 
resultant of two vectors acting perpendicular to each other. So if two vectors are acting, when you say perpendicular, it means that they are at 90 degrees to each other. A perpendicular line to another line is, is touching the other line at an angle of 90 degrees. So you see that if you have two lines like this, right? If you have two lines, this is A and B. If this line is B, you see that A is acting perpendicular to the line B, right? So if you have two vectors that are acting in this direction, perpendicular to one another like this, represented like this, you see that this is first F1, first F2. So you can represent them with a diagram like this. You know that the opposite sides of a rectangle, they are equal. Right, so this F1 is equal to this and this F2 is equal to this. So you complete the triangle like this. You see this is your 90 degree. And if you want to solve for the resultant, if you are used to Pythagoras theorem, you use Pythagoras theorem to find the resultant of this force. That's okay. So if you are looking for that resultant, you're going to have the resultant for this force will be equal to arrow square is equal to F2 squared, which is the Pythagoras theorem. You use the Pythagoras theorem all over, I mean, plus F1 squared. So this is the statement of the Pythagoras theorem. So depending on the value that you are giving, you can solve for the value of arrow. Then if you want to find the direction of the resultant, you can use any of the geometric ratios, right, that, really, that can relate this arrow. Either I use cosine, sine, or tangent to find the direction of this resultant to the horizontal, depending on what the question requires of you. But okay, so with that simple geometry, you can actually solve for the resultant of two vectors that are acting perpendicularly to each other. Okay, so this is what I just described now. The resultant of this vector arrangement can be gotten from your Pythagoras theorem, which gives you r square is equal to f2 square plus f1 squared. So by the time you do your simple mathematics, okay, so please, if you, I'm sure you should be familiar with uh, Pythagoras theorem, but if you are not familiar with Pythagoras theorem, I will just um, encourage you to review it. Maybe you have maybe you have been taught and you have forgotten. So just review Pythagoras theorem. In fact, I want you to review some simple calculations in geometry. Pythagoras theorem, the sine formula and the cosine formula, because you actually need it to solve any problem on vectors. You need those calculate. I mean, you need those formulas. So please just do that small mathematical review so that uh, when you want to solve some problems, you will not find them difficult. Is that okay? So you can just review your bearing, review your sine formula, your cosine formula, then your Pythagoras theorem. Yes, you need these uh, formulas for you to be able to solve problems on vectors, right? So this is uh, Pythagoras theorem and the application of Pythagoras theorem. Okay, so if you are looking for the direction of the force or the resultant force, um, for in this particular case, you are looking for tan theta. So if you know the value of F1 and F2, you can use tangent. Tangent is opposite of hypotenuse. Opposite of adjacent. This is opposite of adjacent. I think there should be, should be an, a little error there. Tangent is opposite of adjacent, right? Which is F1 over at F2. So this is supposed to be tangent is equals to opposite. Yes, you can make that correction there. So typographical error. Opposite of adjacent. So what you have there is a typo error. Make that correction, please. So this is a typo error. It's supposed to be adjacent, adjacent. Okay. So adjacent. Right. Thanks. So this is how to solve for the direction of the 
resultant false that okay so with this you can find this angle theta and that gives you the direction of the resultant force right so thanks we want to take a sample question so that we can just uh, relate what we just discussed now right. so for this question say an object is um, acted upon by two forces of magnitude 5 meter and 12 meter respectively calculate the result of, resultant of the two forces if they act perpendicular to each other if they act perpendicular to each other so when you say perpendicular it means you are going to draw just draw that, that, that diagram like this this is uh, you make your diagram to be straight please don't mind mine okay so this is what you are looking for the resultant this is arrow just like what we drew just now Okay, this is theta, then this is your perpendicular. Okay, so you can actually represent the forces. One is 12 newton, and the other one is uh, 5 newton. Okay, so yeah. So you can decide to complete that so that you have your, your complete uh, triangle in that manner. Sorry, this will be also 12 Newton now. Okay, so I haven't completed it this way. This is your angle 90 degrees. So from the Pythagoras theorem, arrow square by Pythagoras theorem, if you're applying Pythagoras theorem, you have that arrow squared equals to 12 squared, 12 squared plus 5 squared. Okay, so if you work that out, you are going to have that arrow squared equals to 144 plus 25. Yes, you have 144 plus 25. So on adding this, you are going to have 169 right 169 so arrow you square if you square both sides you have square root of 169 see so this is like your normal mathematics so square root of 169 is equal to 13. so this gives you the resultant of the two forces oh this is quite simple and this is normal mathematics is that okay so as i have said in the beginning physics is mathematics physics is mathematics just few theory and all that okay so this how to go about this type of question i hope that is simple and a little bit easy to understand so please i just want you to have this as your test test your understanding and then solve this problem put your answer on a piece of paper snap it and you can send it through the to the whatsapp number that will be showing on your screen please so this is where we are stopping for our class today resolution of vectors resolution of vectors so, so thank you so much um, okay, if you have not subscribed to our channel please kindly subscribe click on the notification button so that when we upload a new video youtube will notify you click on that bell that is shaking right that bell that is ringing click on it also you can reach us through the world number that is showing right on your screen so thank you for your time we hope to see you in our next class